So uh, I will uh, speak about electronic skin in robotics and in humans. So when it comes to humans, it is more or less second skin I will be talking about. It's a multidisciplinary topic, having some input from electronics, some from material science, and some from biology, chemistry as well. So before I start uh, uh, the, the presentation, I go to the main part, a brief background about my group, which is uh, Bendable Electronics and Sensing Technologies. What we do is we try to understand uh, the sense of touch in humans, how we encode tactile data from various parts of the body, and then use this information to develop electronic skin for robotics, giving robots the, the, the sense of feeling by touching object, art, soft, or, or, or hot object. And in the process, some of these technology also then brings back to, is brought back to uh, through wearables or prosthetic limbs, etc., to improve our own uh, our quality of life. So for example, health monitoring. And then leading to, which leads to self-help management. Some of the examples of uh, robotic hands and uh, skin solutions that we have developed are shown here. This is the uh, high resolution tactile sensing chip integrated here on the, on the palm of a robotic work, a humanoid robot. robot. This is 3D printed robotic hand with sensors embedded in the structure itself, so nothing outside. It's like our own receptors inside the skin, uh, embedded deep in the skin, uh, that kind of structure. Entire body of a humanoid robot covered with electronic skin. Uh, graphene based uh, skin, in this case, uh, on a state of the art prosthetic limb, which is ILIM coming from Touch Bionics here in Levingston and another example of 3D printed hand. We also in my group uh, work on virtual, uh, real and virtual interactions, so creating virtual objects as you see here. This is virtual fire, uh, a skeleton, and controlling these virtual objects either through gestures or even directly touching them and feeling these virtual objects. Uh, these are my students, they display their own uh, images here. So there are three D images that you can have in space and then you can you can interact with the virtual objects as well as you can feel them. For example, in this case you are lifting the globe but you have a sense of weight as well. So um, that's something uh, not there uh, yet. I mean this is the first prototype we developed where you have haptic feedback. You can feel these objects. In this case, there's a virtual push button. You press this push button and you can feel that you are pressing something, even if it is a virtual object. So that's the kind of work we are doing with the group. And uh, the core technology uh, behind all these uh, uh, these works is, is divided into four parts. One is related to starting with nanoscale structures, so building atom by atom nanowires, then printing those nanowires on flexible substrates and printing them in such a way that they lead to electronics. So it is not the electronics that you see uh, at home, which is all kind of flat electronics. So it's the electronics we develop is something that can bend. And that's important because skin is, is present on the curvy substrates, uh, surfaces. It's not flat. Real world is not flat. There are so many curvy objects around us. If you want to cover them with uh, with skin, if skin in a sense, you, if you want to give them a sense of uh, a feeling in whatever, it could be a pressure, temperature, or any other sensing parameter, then you have to have that kind of arrangement. Uh, here, uh, complementing this uh, this box here is the ultra thin chips. These are the chips that we use in our computers. Currently they are flat as I mentioned, but if you thin them down, it can be flexible. It's like you got an aluminum bar, if you take thin slices, like aluminum foil we use every day, which is quite flexible, but the bar itself is not flexible. So we thin down the chips and make them flexible. Uh, we also use uh, uh, materials such as graphene to make uh, transparent skin. 
In some cases, transparency is important. I'll come back to some examples where uh, I'll show why transparency is important. And integrating all these uh, in such a way that they lead to the full coverage of the body, whether it is the same. So, uh, and all this work is the, the key people who are behind all this work. My team is shown here. And before I start, I would I'd like to acknowledge all the, their hard work. So here is the outline of, uh, of my lecture. I'll spend a couple of minutes uh, to explain why electronic skin is important, both for robotics and for humans. And then I'll move to the second part where I'll explain the technologies that are available immediately, in midterm, and in long term. And these technologies are also at dimensional scale, some are nanoscale, some are chip scale, which is a centimeter size, uh, size scale, and some are large area. Example you have already seen where large entire body of humanoid was covered with the skin. Then I'll go to the, the, using these technologies, how these technologies we are trying to use them uh, uh, to develop second skin or, or go use them in variables, etc. I'll go to that part and finally I'll conclude this lecture. So coming to the first part, why electronic skin is important? I would like to start by asking a question to all of you. What is the first sensory modality you came across? I mean, a, a, any any uh, animal, a biological uh, animal comes across of starts uh, life with. So that's the first question. And the first question answer is, is given here. Uh, it's the sense of touch. It is the first feeling that we have, I mean, Right from the from uh, in the book itself, you have sense of touch. You don't have vision there. You don't have audio there. Sense of touch I, is also important in our daily life. If you look at this example, think of uh, putting your hand on an ice block for some time, and then try to grasp an object nearby. Uh, very likely you will fail. You can see that this glass in this case will slip out of your hand and you will not be able to do anything about it because for the for, for temporarily your sensory sense of touch, your sensory feeling is, is lost. And this also highlights the importance of touch sensing or through artificial means we call it electronic skin. And if this is so important, the next question to, to all of us is why are we developing prosthetic limbs which are cosmetic in nature? Why do they not have the sense of touch? And then the next question is, what can we do to bring sense of touch in, in such systems, in such artificial systems? If you look at other examples, in this case robotics in automation, if you go, go to a car manufacturing plant, you will see robots working in cages as you see here. There is no human in this cage. And if by, by chance any human enters into this space, we also come across this type of use. Now the question then this raises is, why are we creating machines which are unsafe? In this case, it is no fault of machine. The machine was meant to work in a cage. It turns that human enter, entered into this space. So then, Question is, if we can cover uh, the solution in this case, if we can cover these robots with something that, that can detect a person approaching a robot, then it will become much safer. So in that sense, touch sensing or skin is also important for safety. In future, we talk about more and more interaction between human and, and, uh, and robots. Also at home, we already see some uh, carpet cleaning robots, etc. at home. And this is going to increase in the future. And if that's the case, safety becomes important. Safe interaction is critical. So robotics, uh, robotics is evolving faster. Also in the scenario of Industry 4, where we expect robot and, worker, uh, robot and human to work next to each other as co-workers. And in that case, physical interaction is there. Wherever physical interaction is involved, sense of touch is important. I can give Lots of lots of examples where sense of touch is important. In starting with the social robotics, where uh, 
uh, emotion that you put into to, to the industry uh, where, where such tasks, as given earlier, are, are important. Here is some, some more uh, a, a sketch that I make, some examples which are currently pushing this research. At the center are some of the questions, scientific questions we are trying to address. We are trying to find solutions for these questions. And on this side are some of the futuristic ideas, how the research can open up new opportunities for us. So for example, in case of uh, minimal invasive surgery, as you see that perspective here, Currently, surgeon would insert the tool, surgical tool, through, minim, uh, through a keyhole, and this tool does not have any sense of touch. There's a camera at the end here, and you can see this is a dark space, dark area, and you are trying to see the tissue, you are trying to feel the tissue. It's normal for us to palpate the body to understand our differentiate between heart and soft tissue. Now, you can imagine, how can you understand Hard, differentiate hard and soft object by looking at it. It's difficult. There is, there are always visual illusions. But if this particular instrument has a skin all around it, you can get tactile image, and you can then understand whether the tissue in contact with the with the instrument or if it was hard or soft. So that's one example here. Uh, the Vinci Robotics is, is an example uh, where currently there is no tactile feedback. So that's the surgeon sits here and looks at the console and they try to operate the patient in a very precise way. And if the touch sensing touch feedback or haptic feedback is, is available to the surgeon, then this type of uh, the, the surgical operations, they will be uh, much better. The, the precision uh, can be achieved here. In this case, we look at our mobile phones. We every day we purchase online uh, retail. Uh, is one sector which is quite uh, a, a rapidly growing sector at this point of time. But we cannot really feel the, if you want to buy clothes online, we cannot feel the texture at this point. So we just see the image, and then there is a lot of this thing we purchase and we send it back. So that's not a good sign for the economy also. Hmm. So many things are going back. Can we do something? Can we use touch sensing? Can we create that happy feedback? And, and then this lead to next generation of touch screen interfaces. This is already there in markets on TV. If you look at larger display and you touch that, you can have some vibration feedback. But that's just the beginning. More is yet to come. Example. In long term, we may also think of elderly person, person sitting here uh, through the brain controlling the soft robotic uh, limb, as you see, and playing with the, with the grandchild. So, uh, in a way, we cannot, uh, uh, age is, is natural, we cannot bring it, uh, the, the, the bring it back, but there are technological solutions available where you can continue to uh, bridge the gap that comes with age. To do this, we have to then work on various ways. How can we then develop? These are some of the factors, not all. Looking into what what is the task that a robot need to do, then this decides what type of sensor is needed. Then we have to look into the factors such as do I need softness, flexibility, conformability, etc. And electronics and electrical factors here, fast and reliable operation. If I put a sensor on, a, on the finger of a robot and that sensor is slow, then the reaction from the robot will also be slow. There is no feedback and that does not do the job very well. You need a real time, very quick uh, response from like we, like us. And then if you consider all these factors, then there are these factors which are engineering related factors or manufacturing related factors. That means it should be manufacturable, maintenance must be easy, uh, economy, reliability, etc. <coughs> so these are lots of lots of factors we need to consider while developing such a skin. If you look at our own skin, these are the soft tissues, these are uh, the, the fingerprints that you see on top. Then you have dermis, epidermis and various receptors are embedded in these soft layers. So at various depths. 
Currently, the technology, as I was mentioning, the electronics is flat. And in this case, if you look at biology, they are looking at sensors at various depths, and you press them, all many, uh, a population of these receptors gets activated, and they together give us some signals which we interpret as, as a cylindrical surface or a flat surface, etc. So that the population gives us that information. So in a sense, if we have to draw up such a skin, uh, and which gives us a rich experience from the environment, then the first thing that we need to do is we need to work on electronics. Because computing is all about electronics today, and if electronics is, is not flexible, then I will have to redesign the robot, or let's say we have to make the world flat which is not possible. <laughs> so, electronics must be uh, made to meet the requirements and it must be made to be conformable to the flexible. So, and not only this, it should have uh, various type of sensors which can allow us to detect the temperature, the softness, hardness, roughness or glossy surface, etc. And it must be on the, on the entire body. The difference with respect to skin and other sensory modalities, eyes are two, they are centralized. But skin is distributed all over the body, so it has to then, you have to look at the large area. So that's the difference with respect to other sensory modalities, you have two ears, two eyes, one nose, but then skin is all over. And this has been ignored uh, until a couple of years ago. People did not look to consider skin as the whole body when it comes to robotics. People were just playing with their hands. They were doing ro making robots that can do, you know, some some task, pick and place kind of task. But now this has opened very interesting direction where you want to expire the whole body. For example, lifting a heavy sandbag where you don't use fingers. You just grab it, and the large contact with the body becomes so important. To, to plan and execute that task. So not only this, if you look at the whole body, we have large number of senses. So this is some example of various parts of the body given the mechanoreceptors. Now mechanoreceptors are just one part of the, the population of receptors we have. These are the receptors sensitive to pressure. Then there are separate receptors which are sensitive to temperature, further category sensitive to pain, like that. If you look at this number in the palm itself, you have about 5,000 such receptors. Now imagine you have to read these 5,000 sensors, on that basis you have to take an action. So how fast our system is, and then you have to have electronics with that, that, uh, that kind of speed. A flexible one, which does not exist, on top of that you have another problem, that you have large numbers. That large number leads to large data, and big data today is a big problem. But there is a lot of information in that big data, and that's why this is also an interesting and exciting topic. If these 5,000 sensors are to be read at the same time, you need at least 10,000 wires. Now try to put 10,000 wires in your hand and think about the dexterity. What happens? <laughs> So I'm just highlighting the challenges here. How do we deal with such challenges? I give some examples later. So before I move to the next part, I would like to define at this stage what I mean by electronic skin or conformable electronics. So large any type of sensor that you see, physical sensor or chemical sensor. Integrated on a flexible substrate. It could be one sensor, it could be 10, 100 different you know, depends on the application, plus other functionalities such as energy harvesting. I mean, we have cellular energy, and that's how our receptors they work. And local distributed memory, which we have as well, and some signal conditioning taking place here. Signal conditioning means if there is a noisy signal, you filter it out. That's pretty standard for electronics. And possibly if you can connect it in such a way that you don't need wires, so that's the kind of ideal scenario, you have wireless communication and all that put together on a flexible substrate is what I mean by, uh, what, what I refer to as an electronic skin. Uh, this is more than the human skin because we are not sensitive to many chemical senses. 
So when we are developing any artificial system, why can we not develop a system which give more uh, uh, capable of detecting more parameters from the environment than just the skin? And that way, robots can be more than humans. So coming to the next part, with being all these challenges around us, we we, are, we started looking into what are the potential solutions. So I'm moving in this, this part to the solutions that we have been exploring to, for the development of electronic scale. What are the materials I can try? What are the methods, fabrication methods, manufacturing methods I can try? And we looked into various directions and actually no. <laughs> there are various directions. <laughs> So there are so many solutions available. Actually, solutions are also uh, just in front of us. We have to look at how we have to change our perspective and we can get what we want. So with this, the first solution that we looked into, we got electronics around us. Okay, it's not flexible, it's flat. What can we do to use it so that we have some quick solutions? That was the first target and I call it as, a, as an immediate solution. And that solution came from the technology that has been there since early 80s. If you go back and check your printers, the ribbon is quite flexible and it has conductive wires going through it. So that we call it as flexible printed circuit boards. Now that's flexible. If we can put these small PCB, small electronic component chips, etc., we can integrate them on, on such a ribbon, it will be a flexible skin. So that's immediate solution. It is not ultra flexible because more components you put, then flexibility is also uh, gets limited. But to begin with, we started with this solution. That was a European Commission project uh, through which we developed this iCup. We call it iCup. That's a humanoid robot. Uh, when I was working in Italy, it was in that lab. But this iCup, when it was developed, there was no uh, skin on this iCup. And that led to this project, which we call it RoboSkin. In this project, we developed the skin, covered the entire body, or the, let's say most of the parts of, of the body, body with the skin. This is nicely packaged skin, which is also available now commercially uh, in different uh, different designs, different colors, etc. But the key point behind is is this: the development of the skin is the scooter wrap concept. So from the electronics point of view, a spherical surface is the most difficult surface uh, to realize electronics on. Because most of the techniques we have developed, they are based on light and light travels in straight line. So when it is a surface, you light goes in a, in, at this point, the area light covers is more and then the top. And that makes it very difficult for us to make electronics on such a surface. So what we do, what we did here, to overcome this challenge is this concept. You got a cylindrical or a spherical surface. You take triangular projections, and from those triangular projections, you can make a 2D layout. And that way, if I have a 3D map of my body, I can make 2D layout of my body as well. But once I got 2D layout, you will see that 2D layout is actually made of triangles. So I can then make PCBs, printed circuit boards, in a triangular form and I can cover most of the parts. Once it is covered, you then rebuild the 3D surface again and that's how we can make a generic skin. It can be any type of robot, any surface, you can cover most of the parts. I say most of the parts because with triangular projections, you don't have you lose some percentage, but you, you anyway cover most of the parts. These are some examples shown here. That's the that's the uh, a patch with 16 triangles. For each uh, 16, on the back side of these triangles, we put electronic chips, which are essentially a convert sensor signal into a digital data. That digital data then can be sent to a computer on board computer on on the board. And uh, these are the capacitive sensors. When you press the sensor, the distance between the electrodes will change. And that gives a measure of the change or the amount of force that is applied. You have that sensor on your mobile phone also, but they cannot be called a special sensor because they are essentially switched. You press them, it will be on or off. 
he does not give you a measure of pressure which you are applying on the wire. So that way, this is a uh, touch sensor, uh, touch screen on your mobile phone is a very simple uh, example of electronic skin that I'm showing here. This skin was then implemented on various type of robots to show that it's a generic solution. In this case, iCup, uh, this is a Casper uh, robot which is uh, used uh, in the University of Echochard and it is used to teach autistic children. And this is uh, 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 the now. This is no longer uh, This is soft, uh, soft brain from Japan. They have purchased this now. Robot. It's a commercial. This is shown to Bodicon, which is also used in commercial. So they are trying this in, uh, and that kind of the scenario I was mentioning for safe interaction in a, in a, in a manufacturing plant uh, is what they are trying now. And it also led to interesting directions where you could. Uh, interact, use touch and vision together, as you see here in this video, is in large contact. So before that, before the skin was available, the kind of contacts were the fingertip, you know, touching and, and picking in place. But now you can you can contact large area and actions can be based on that. So it's a simultaneous contact uh, with the area, in a particular area. And the technology was also then miniaturized and then integrated on the fingertips. And you can see how the robot is able to now use this tactile feedback to manipulate the soft objects. So uh, not only this, we also some students are trying these uh, these existing solutions. Uh, they are like embroidery. They are putting them on clothes, and they are trying different experiments. For example, in this case, the light would change based on the walking pattern. Somebody dancing, it would change that way. Uh, so they are trying different different combinations. Uh, so then, this was the so far I have discussed what I have presented are solutions that are available. Uh, a bit of innovation we can develop electronic skin, but that has a limitation because the kind of vulnerability uh, that we can achieve is is for large surface large curvatures. For this part it's fine. For this part it's fine. But when I go for a small curvature, such as if I have to wrap around this 90 degree uh, curvature, this kind of technology will not work. We talk about today's smart cities, we talk about Internet of Things, connecting every object uh, with each other through Internet, there's a 5G communication that's coming up. If we put all these technologies together, then electronic skin can also be applied to objects, and objects come with all types of curvatures big, small, we have to prepare for every curvature event. In that case, the kind of technology that we need, I will move in the next part, which is inorganic semiconductor based conformable flexible electronic skin. I call e skin here, which means electronic skin. So one example is here. I mentioned that uh, silicon, normally silicon is the, is the material we use for development of the chips chips that are used in all the electronics that we see here, we see here. and uh, this is not flexible. So the moment you try it's a brittle material, the moment you try to bend it, it will crack. So one way to do this is we take this uh, silicon, as I was mentioning earlier, and we, we then uh, encapsulate it in, in polymer substrate, in this case it's called white. And you can see this example, it can be wrapped around the, the, the substrate and it becomes quite flexible. So basically what we do is, the technology that we have today, we just use the same technology. It's like milking more out of what exists today. You make the chips, you make electronics on that, and then thin after it is to post-processing set, we grind from the back side, we thin it down to about 10 micrometer. When it is 10 micrometer, it looks like quite flexible in combined. Still it is brittle, I mean it, it is fragile, you have to handle it properly, but bendability is possible. Not only this, we are able to print silicon now. So that's something, uh, a, a very uh, a new topic has not been tried, printing of material which was so far considered to be non-flexible, brittle material. So in this case what we do, 
And this is also, there's also a problem related to manufacturing. Some of the steps we need for the fabrication, they require temperature more than 1000 degrees. Our flexible substrates are normally plastic. They would melt at 100, 150. You need to, to have some steps uh, or compatible steps uh, to match with the final substrate. And those are other challenges that we are overcoming. We have overcome many of those challenges. And in this case, so for example, this is what we do. We use a PDMS, which is a silicone rubber. Uh, we use uh, at home also these days silicone rubber. So we use this to pick up the wires. These are nano skin wires. So you don't see these wires with the naked eye. You need microscope to see these wires. So you transfer them on a flexible substrate, or you can print directly without this one. You can directly print as well. This is printed uh, surface. So after you print, you, you develop the transistors, which is the basic building, building block of electronics. And if you have such a sensor on the clothes, it will give you a measure of exposure to also, uh, sorry, ultraviolet light. So for example, when you go uh, uh, to beach, the, the sunlight is, uh, the UV exposure can be quite high and it can lead to skin cancer as well. So such solutions can give you, uh, can warn you in advance that you are exposed to uh, excessive UV uh, and it's time to then go to shade, etc. In simple way, what we do is shown here in this animation. We realize these nanoscale structures on the wafer. Wafer is the standard silicon wafer that we have on which we realize electronics. We pick them and we place them on the, on the flexible substrate and we place them in such a way at, at specific locations where we wanted electronics to be. And then you connect them, it becomes the entire surface is flexible. And this also takes care of the temperature because all high temperature processing steps are done at this point, which can withstand high temperature. And also, we go after that. Some example by doing this, we uh, are shown here. This is one transistor that the area of transistor wrapped around that transistor. Now, this is as a silicon device. Uh, I must say, the performance of these flexible transistors is at par with the performance that we have today. There are many other solutions people are trying using organic semiconductor inks, etc., printing ink directly, but they do not lead to, normally do not lead to high performance. And high performance is very much needed if I want my mobile phone to, to use as a wristband and if its performance is low just because it is flexible that does not help. I do not want performance to be low and I want functionality, functionality to, be, to be more and more. So that way we don't compromise on the, on the functionality or on the performance in this case. Uh, and that shows the vision how this can be then extended from the manufacturing point of view, how this can be extended to large area printing or large areas. So for example, we have the rolls of these nano wires as shown here. We print them and we have developed this setup in my lab. If you are interested, sometime we can arrange a visit also and we can show how we, we print all these and we get, in this case, one example is shown here, simple device, one transistor, one memory is shown here uh, as an example. And some more examples are shown here, which have been involved by printing different type of materials. In one case, silicon nanowire, another case, zinc oxide nanowire. The scheme for the, the printing arrangement, simple arrangement, shown here. And finally, what we do is shown here. So we print these wires to get transistor. This, this is the, the, the pressure sensitive layer. You press the layer. The current between this in this in this path will change. And we are interested in that because that change in current is a measure of amount of pressure on the part. And by printing, I can get the, the skin of the large area. So that leads, that now takes me to the next point where I, I want you to uh, see some more complexity. So far, I was talking about electronics alone. Electronics, some of these electronic devices become sensor, some are, some are. Uh, the transistor which leads to read out, etc. 
But that's not all. Our skin is more complex. We have sensing embedded its intrinsic sensing along with actuation. The sensor receptors are embedded in muscles and muscles are what actuators we have. So the skin must have sensor, actuator, computation, all together. Embedded in soft material and this becomes a very complex uh, problem. And interesting, exciting as well. I give one example here that we have recently developed and this is uh, a soft material that the sensors all it's an intrinsic sensing. The material is prepared in such a way that structure itself can be called a sensor, but it's a soft material. As you can see, that's the bone like movement, and this also does that. See? So, this I, I have not included here. These wires that you see, they are basically giving the sensing output. It moves, and you get those terms. So, that kind of work. Uh, is, is next, I was mentioning about how sensors are to be embedded in soft material. So in a sense, we are going from electronic skin, which is artificial skin, which is just a flat surface, to more complex, which is a soft surface, as well as, as, well as flexible. And sensors embedded in various depths. Here is another example where we are using 3D printing. I don't know how many of you have heard of 3D printing. It's, it's these days uh, very popular that you can print layer by layer, you can print complex 3D structures. So you don't have to make mold, etc. to make complex structures, you can use 3D printing. But so far, 3D printing has been used to print only one type of material, and that's plastic. So in this case, what we have done, we have modified our uh, DIY 3D printers to manage and allow us to print plastic and conductive material together. Conductive material is basically needed to connect two sensors and to read the data from them. So it's an interconnect, it's a wire section. So that also addresses the one problem that I was mentioning earlier about large number of wires. So we print this, this fingertip in this case shown here, we print in such a way that the capacity of sensor becomes part of the structure. There is no separate sensor needed here. Again, an example of intrinsic sensor. So for example, in this case, we print the plastic, we print the, the light gray color is, is metal, then we fill up with some soft material, on top of that another bit metal, it becomes a capacitor, we press it, the distance between electrodes will change, and that will give you a measure of pressure you are applying of course to it. And then also by 3D printing, some of the electronic components are, are off the shelf, you put them together, you embed in such a way that you don't see anything outside. Now this is interesting because it is quite robust with respect to the skin I was presenting earlier, which is wrapped around the external surface. In this case, electronic sensors, etc. all embedded, and there is no problem of wear and shear. And 3D printing is also cost effective, so it can lead to affordable limbs, artificial limbs, and can can have much bigger impact. These videos they show all the response from various sensors that are uh, that are done for, uh, in this way. Then example is interesting computing. Some of the nano wires that we are developing we develop in such a way that they they have controlling uh, gate is the usually the controlling element. But if I have multiple gates. This can act like a synaptic junction that, that we have the way we process the information in our body through neurons. Multiple inputs coming, they are summation takes place at this point. If this summation is above a certain threshold, and that threshold could be based on memory from the past, or it could be based on some experience, then next uh, 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 the signal passes from this point to the next one. That way we have implemented this and we have demonstrated also uh, through, through simulation as well as through fabrication of devices that when you press a point, uh, you basically activate a population of receptors and if you consider the first spike of response coming from these, the population of receptors, that gives you a measure of the amount of force, directional force and location. So, only one contact, but multiple information. You don't have to send all raw data to the brain. Uh, 
brain does not have capacity to process that many receptors. So we have distributed computing in our body, and that's how this distributed computing we are trying to implement in the next generation of skin. Not only this, skin is also important. Uh, the, the power inside, power behind all these sensors is also important. And that takes me to the next part. Can we develop energy on the skin? So, if I talk, take you back to 10,000 sensors, the amount of power that the sensors will need will be huge. And if you use your laptop for some time, the heat it generates is also can be problematic sometimes. So, if you want to have such a skin which is actually quite hot just because sensors are working all the time, that will not be an acceptable solution. So, there has to be some solution uh, which uh, generates energy and cools down, etc. In that regard, we have uh, we have been working on materials such as graphene. Now, graphene is a 2D material. When I say 2D, it's not 3D like this one. If you take a slice of uh, of the lead of your pencil and take single atomic layer, angstrom level uh, thickness, that would be graphene. So we transfer that kind of material on flexible substrate, and one example is shown here. Uh, 25 centimeter by 25 centimeter graphene was transferred. Graphene, if you look at the uh, electron microscope, it looks like flake snowflakes, as you see here. And it is highly conductive and transparent. <laughs> it's 98% transparent. So we use this to develop sensors, and uh, you see here, this is a, I will not go through the fabrication process, but the point here is the sensor that we got with graphene. We compared with similar structure we make with gold, graphene leads to 2.5, at least 2.5 times gold sensitive sensors. And because it is transparent, if you place this, uh, this transparent skin on solar cells, then the skin does not block light. This means you can generate energy, and part of this energy could be used to operate the skin, and rest can be used to operate the waters. So, in that sense, skin becomes an interesting. People talk about large area distribution of sensors and skin is a challenging, it's a problem, how do we deal with that? But if we look at it differently, it's a huge opportunity. Because it's large area, it's solar cells, if you think of large area, they will generate huge energy, and that energy can be used to power motors also, not just the skin. With this version, the skin was then integrated, the battery skin was integrated on island. Uh, and we then use it, the, the signals were used to grab soft object. So example shown here is with or without touch sensing enabled, enabling touch sensing. So in this case, uh, tactile feedback was disabled, so it crushes the tactile feedback. The, 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 the grasping is quite, uh, as you can see, it does not crush that. We also generate energy, it's just by contacting, so for example, clapping, you can generate fibroelectric energy. Provided so you have the right combination of materials, as you see here, the, in the back, if you just do that, you can generate sufficient energy. So if I put this type of material on, on this side and this side, and when I'm walking, I can actually generate energy. And this could be used to power some of the devices I'm wearing on body, it's not sufficient to power the mobile phone, but it can be, can be used to power some of the LEDs, etc. As you see in this case, BEST, that already has about 30 LEDs. So we have also extended this, uh, uh, we have also extended this, please remind me of the time. Uh, I have, uh, I can go on, I have several slides here. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, this can be extended, to, uh, has been extended already, to roll up something we call a solar skin. So, in this case, we don't need any touch sensors or graphene touch layer. We have used it in such a way that solar cell itself becomes a touch sensor. So, in that sense, this is one, one device but does multiple things. It generates energy as well as uh, can be used as touch sensor. How do we do this? Simple thing is, solar cells generate energy only when light uh, reaches the solar cell. If you block it, that means either there was shadow or there was a contact. We use this simple principle to use solar cell 
also has got sensors, and that has implication on many electronic gadgets. You can make keyboards, etc., with all which is all the time generating energy, and can also be used as your switches of your keyboard. So that's uh, that's one thing we have, and this example is shown here how it can be used in robotics. So that video shows how we have used it as a proximity sensing also. So you take it because solar cell continues to generate. In this case, it generates from the palm area itself, it generates 380 milliwatts. And if you extend it to whole body, which is 1.5 centimeters square more or less, it will generate more than one kilowatt. Now that one kilowatt is good enough, uh, five volts per the wattage. So that's a lot of energy. And that's why this thing is actually an opportunity. It's not a problem. Uh, so, and we have also developed the flexible supercapacitors which store these excess, excess energy uh, and which can be later on used when there is no sunlight. So that also has been done and we demonstrated in this case, this is the solar cell and the solar cell are the flexible supercapacitor. There are capacitors which are can store charge and this is also using hybrid cars. So then you can use these solar energy to, to operate motors. That was the first example we demonstrated last year. Okay, this is a whole range of technologies. I have several other examples. Uh, there's uh, many of these videos are, are present on the YouTube channel of my group. If you go to YouTube, search DESD underscore U of G, then you can uh, watch these videos. Let me take you to the next part, which is these electronic skin technologies that I have uh, presented. How could we use them in, in, uh, in our life in humans? Uh, what examples we have developed uh, here in the uh, in University of Glasgow? The first example is, is related to non-invasive health monitoring. So diabetes is a big problem. Trip test is the common standard test. You have to take blood every now and then. Now, because of these frequent blood samples, the adherence to the medical uh, the, uh, practice or the uh, it becomes difficult. Diagnosis becomes difficult. If there was a non-invasive technique, which means you don't have to take blood, then it will lead to better results. And this is uh, scientifically also it has been it has been shown. How can we do this? If you compare the blood with sweat and tears, you will see the composition of the various analytes in sweat and tear is uh, it has more of the same uh, analytes that you see in, in blood. The concentration is different. So many groups uh, initially try tear-based solution, contact lens, electronic contact lens, etc., putting wire sensors on the contact lens which can detect glucose. And through glucose, then you detect diabetes and it becomes an automated solution. But not everybody is very contactless. Whereas everybody sweats. <laughs> so if you can develop a solution, which is a sweat-based solution, from sweat you can detect the, uh, the glucose level and then from there you can detect diabetes level. Now, there's a big problem that is yet to be resolved but the solution is the first step in that direction. And the big problem is, how do we correlate sweat-based uh, solution with blood-based solution? Because blood is, is currently the gold standard. So in that direction, what we did, we have developed the sensors, PA sensors particularly, which gives an indication of change in the glucose level. That's shown here, there's an antenna also connected. If you put it on the body, it will absorb the sweat, there's a mobile phone, mobile app also developed. There's no battery needed here because through NFC you can power the uh, power the sensor here, and all the data comes to the mobile. And this is the real time data that you get. So in real time, you can change. You can even see the changing values of of the lights uh, from the sweat, and then you can detect from them the the glucose level. So. Next example is communication between deaf and blind people. We have developed solutions for that. This is how deaf and blind people they communicate. Touch sensing is very central to their communication. So they 
you have these codes. Uh, the next slide is codes are given. Different combination of fingers refer to A, B, or C, and that's how they talk to each other. So what we have done, we have used uh, this touch sensor and actuator in some of the integrated sensor actuator that I was showing earlier. We have integrated them on gloves, and by wearing them, they can get the tactile feedback as well as the vibro tactile feedback as well as they can transmit the same. So in that sense, two people, them and by people, they don't need to be together. They can be uh, at a distance and yet they can communicate in the same way. And this communication can also be then extended to a normal person and a deaf and blind or a robot and deaf and blind or a robot and robot. So it can be extended in many ways. So this is an example here. So that's the communication. This is the braille alphabet. That's the implemented uh, glove system which allows this type of communication. We have tested these devices also uh, uh, with the subject, about 20 subject, and results were quite intelligent. We are further improving this technology so that it can be used in, uh, in daily life. Not only this, we are some of these materials that we have brought up for artificial skin, we are using them to accelerate the wound healing. Now, wound healing is a problem, especially uh, uh, with age, that because healing process slows down. If we can use some materials which accelerate the healing, then that will be a direct impact on the quality of life. So one example, we have recently published this paper, is based on glycine. Glycine is based on amino acids, it's kind of easily in our body, it's biocompatible. And we noted that glycine is piezoelectric. So you press it, it generates charge. So if you consider our body from the electronic engineer point of view, it's basically some circuits that are made here. And the whole side circuit is broken. So once circuit is broken, no current goes through that, that particular circuit. And no current flowing, you have to then bring some material which allows this current to flow. And as current flows, then healing can be possible. This is what we are doing, a simple, I have explained in a very simple way, actually it is quite complex. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we have done is, uh, uh, this glycine based material that's on glycine and hydrogen, both are uh, biocompatible. And we, we use them, using them we have got the piezoelectric sensor. This sensor can be embedded in, uh, in the compression bandage or it can be the smart bandage. It is piezoelectric, it will generate local charges. But at the same time, it can act as a stress sensor, so it can give a measure of stress. The studies have found that uh, the compression bandage, the amount of pressure you apply, that also uh, uh, influences the, 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 the wound healing rate. There is an optimum pressure that leads to faster healing. So you can also use, in that sense, this type of sensors. The interesting point of this sensor is that it also dissolves in, in water after some time. So this material is interesting that way. So there is no uh, uh, hygiene issue once you throw this smart bandage, this type of bandage, uh, it will melt, uh, the material will melt. And so kind of it is connects to sustainable electronics for the future. The electronics, these are some examples shown here. This is the sample. After one minute, you can see it starts to dissolve. And after five minutes, it completely dissolves. So it does the job, and then after that, it, it just dissolves in the, in the fluid, local fluid, the wound fluid. Slightly taking it close to the real skin, we are working on the, 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 the next topic is synthetic skin. So how can we use these electronic skin sensors etc. in the real skin? If you look at the real skin, our skin, it's a piezoelectric image. So in that sense, we have worked on this kind of material that you see here, it's a collagen mesh scaffold and we, uh, we make this type of material and we uh, compared with, uh, with, we noted that it is also piezoelectric like skin. And this type of material is used in, uh, in tissue engineering in plastic surgery, etc. So in that sense, some of the knowledge that we have from the artificial skin, we are really bringing it to the uh, to the synthetic skin, which has a huge implication in many areas, and some of these applications are given here. It can be used for skin regeneration, they 
we are successful, then there will be no need for grafting. So you can generate skin, excellent wound healing, prosthetic, self health management, human skin model for research. We can use such uh, uh, artificial system to develop skin model, and that skin model can be used then to study our human skin. And uh, alternate to animal testing also, this type of research has scope there. And that takes care of many of the ethical issues also in the makes us uh, responsible scientists. So that, that brings me to the end of this talk. I would uh, play a short video which concludes many of the things I have stated. So how do we do it? This video shows how we develop electronic skin, put them on the body hand, and in this case, how the prosthetic limbs as a prosthetic limbs can be used by amputees. So this is the 3D printer. That's uh, it's printing the, the hand with all the sensors, etc. I did. I was showing that earlier. So once it is done, we also develop stretchable components. We test these components. As you can see here, when you stretch, how much of the conductivity changes, etc. Integrated on the robotic hand, in this case, it's integrated to dummy. Actuators, motors are there. Using EMG, you can control the control the through, uh, through muscle fibers, we have control the movements, and then in this case, amputee wearing the band and is able to control the, the movement of the fingers of this prosthetic hand. So that's basically we ask the amputee to think that they are closing their their uh, they are grasping something, and when they think that way, they are actually able to do it because muscle continue to turn to that in the same way as a normal hand. Uh, that shows the design how we design these this type of thing. <coughs> Uh, before it is taken to the printer. And that way we, we complete the whole loop. So to conclude, I would like to say tactile sensing is very important for the safe interaction between human and machine, in fact for all inanimate objects. So I actually gave three years ago, four years now, a TED talk and the title of the TED talk was Animating the Inanimate. And that's basically what I also shown as, as a summary here, how can we develop skin and give robotics a sense of touch. And this could be applied to other objects also. It could be applied to the grass or the mouse, etc. Currently, mouse does not give you any tactile feedback. The Skype communication is just you see uh, people each other remotely, but you don't really feel it. So that's the example of all that I was showing where you can create virtual objects, somebody, your relative sitting in America, the display and the feed here also through virtual things. So touch sensing is very important. I talked about the technology which enables it, flexible electronics, uh, which is a disruptive area that can add new dimension to current electronics industry also. So electronic skin is a vehicle, mm -hmm. but then the technology that we are developing for electronic skin could also be used for next generation of electronics. So that way it is just disruptive and will have enormous impact in future industry. <coughs> Electronics, the technique that I presented, uh, manufacturing by printing, is also on its own a very important area in the future. We would like to print electronics like we print our papers today. So give some command, write some codes, give command to computer print, and it prints electronics for you. So that is the impact. For that, you have to develop electronics first. Printing techniques must be developed first. And electronic skin could underpin the advances in several areas, uh, several applications that includes bionics, healthcare, internet of things, wearable systems, and uh, smart cities, etc. I would like to acknowledge the funding, generous support I have received from various funding agencies. This include Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, my I'm current fellow of PSRC. Uh, European Commission, there are several projects currently going on around skin, development of skin, funded by European Commission, Scottish Funding Council, some of the work related to, to the healthcare side was funded for them, Royal Society, and Royal Academy of Engineering. Thank you very much.